Adventures of Joy Sunmer, The Blue Amber of Sumatra, Book One, by Blanca Carranza and John Lee. Illustrations by John Lee. Chapter One, Surprises. Rainforests are alive, always changing and filled with surprises. But some surprises are bigger than others, and they can change everything. On one of the largest tropical islands in the world, Sumatra, the lush green rainforest stretched far and wide. Under the thick canopy of leaves, tangled branches, and drooping vines, a young sunbear named Joy hid in the shade of a huge fern. The thick canopy let only a few beams of light pass through it, keeping the forest floor covered in shade. On Joy's chest, his heart-shaped light patch of fur was bright in the shade of the fern. His older sister Ayu had not found him yet. Last time they played hide and seek, she caught him as he ran for the safety at the home tree. She ran faster than him, so he had learned to hide better than she could. And now they had the same number of wins. Whoever won this game would be the champion. A few feet away grew a giant red flower covered in orange spots called a corpse flower. It smelled like rotten food, and all around it hovered buzzing flies who loved stinky nectar. Joy felt lucky because Mama Bear had told him it's the biggest flower in the world, but only blooms for a few days at a time. And Joy had found one. She also said that when a corpse flower blooms, it means change is coming. Joy wasn't sure about that part. Ayu liked being clean. And the smell of the flower was so terrible that she wouldn't go near it if she didn't have to. Joy planned to sneak away and hide somewhere else when she finally came looking. Vines hung from nearby branches, winding around a tree trunk. Joy passed the time by trying to follow one vine at a time up the tree with his eyes. Over and under other vines they would go. He traced them as far. Up into the tree as he could before the vine would curve and vanish around the side of the trunk. Joy listened carefully for his sister. He could hear the breeze rustling the leaves of the trees high in the canopy. The buzzing and crawling sounds of insects sometimes distracted him. He was curious about what kind of bug made each sound. Joy also heard birds up in the trees singing their songs in the bright morning light. Joy, Ayu called. Come on! We have to get to the great big fig tree. Mama and Papa expect us to be there. Ayu wandered just a few strides near the bush. Joy covered his mouth to hide a chuckle. If I time this right, Joy thought, I might get to pounce on her. Then I'll win. Where are you? Ayu called out again. Joy waited until she turned so her back faced him. He crouched down and got ready. Come on, you little stinker! You're gonna get us in trouble! Joy ran out of the bush. Surprise! He yelled as he leapt at his sister. Ayu looked over her shoulder, eyes wide and mouth open in shock. Joy crashed into her, and down they went. Ayu landed on her back with an oof. Joy landed on all fours on top of her, his paws covering the flower-shaped light patch of fur on her chest. Thick sunbear fur protected Ayu from the twigs on the ground, and the leaf-covered forest floor cushioned her fall. Ugh! Get off of me! Ayu said, rolling until Joy lost his balance and fell over, laughing. <laughs> I got you! Joy said, feeling very proud. Yeah, yeah, you got me! Ayu said, rolling her eyes. I wasn't playing any more anyway. I told you we need to get going. It's harvest day at the great big fig tree. Joy rolled his eyes back at her.、Oh, Do we have to? I know it's really important to the orangutans, but for us, it's just a lot of sitting around listening to the same history lesson about the tree. And why don't you just call it Big Fig like everyone else? Because sometimes I like saying the whole name. Mayu said, "You just like hearing yourself talk." Joy teased his sister, but Joy knew Ayu was right, and together they walked in the direction of Big Fig. The great Big Fig tree is special, Joy. Strangler fig trees usually destroy the tree they grow on. But Big Fig didn't. The tree underneath and Big Fig grew tall together. Joy sighed and interrupted, and they showed each other respect. The tree underneath helped Big Fig reach the sunlight above the canopy. In turn, Big Fig protected the tree underneath from wind. I know the story already. 
I hear it several times a year, whenever harvest day comes. Ayu reached over and poked Joy's tummy. <laughs> and you enjoy the fix the orangutans share with us every harvest day too, huh? Joy's eyes wandered off as he imagined a pile of sweet, juicy figs. Oh yeah, he said with a smile. His long, sunbare tongue fell from his mouth, dripping drool. I can taste them now. Then show some respect for the custom, Joy, Ayu said. It's not a long time and it doesn't take any effort from you. It's important to the orangutans. Okay, fine, Joy said. You're right. I suppose it's not that bad. Above the two sun bears, a panicked voice cried out, It's really bad! Joy and Ayu looked up to see two orangutans swinging their way through the branches of the trees. Their long orange fur trailed behind them as they traveled. They headed the same direction as the cubs were, toward Big Fig. What happened? One of the orangutans asked the other. Joy and Ayu just watched on in silence. I don't know. No one does, said the other orangutan. But Kellaru said it must be a... Orange Ape's explanation trailed off, the sound of her voice lost in bending branches and rustling leaves. What's going on, Ayu? Joy asked. You heard what I did, Joy, Ayu said. But let's not waste any time finding out. Let's go. Okay, Joy said with a grin, stepping around in front of his sister. I'll race ya! Joy shouted, then took off running. Hey, you little cheater! Ayu shouted back at him, laughing. Together, they dashed in the direction of the great big fig tree. What could cause the orangutans to get so riled up, they wondered.